Integrated Math 3 practice test for 10 ready. This is question number 23. Oh, chords, how I dislike you. The two chords shown in the circle intercept the given arcs. What's the measure for MPN? Now, the idea of how all this works is in some ways, I mean, visually speaking anyway, based off of like this perfect circle model. And it's not going to be perfect because, I mean, if you've seen anything I've ever done, you know that the possibility of me doing something perfect is highly unlikely. So I get this, but you're going to pretend like that line, in fact, that one's so bad that I, even I can't put up with it. So you're going to pretend like this is right in the middle. These are all right angles, which are of course 90 degrees. And it also breaks the circle up into four parts. Circles have 360 degrees, so I break it up into four parts, so each one of these happens to be 90. So in a perfect world, the angle that I'm given will also tell me the length of my arc. That's true only when the uh, central point is being used to as the intersection point of my arcs, and it has to go all the way through. So basically diameters that intersect, that works perfect. If these were a little bit smaller, you'd have smaller angles, and they would also match up perfectly. But you'll notice they aren't using the center of the circle here. They're pulling it away. So what does that look like? So let's take a little bit of an eraser to this. So if I have a point here, almost like I'm pulling this point, what does that do to the overall structure of the circle and the angles? So if that's the point I'm pulling them to, I'm still going to the same spot. So here we go. We'll take this and move it down to here. Now what you should be able to see here, more or less, I mean it's not the best work that I've done, it's not the worst either for sure. This angle, which used to be a right angle, has now become severely obtuse. Not severe, well, it's pretty severe. And this one has become equally acute in balance. So really when you move that central point of intersection to somewhere else in the circle, the angles will adjust themselves to get to the same uh, points on the uh, arc, it's, or the arcs itself, so the points on the circle. In order to maintain those, you have to change the angles. So what we really get here is just us averaging those two things together, and that's the concept we're going to use for this question. You can see that this is not in the center. So instead, in order to find the measure of MPN, which usually would be uh, if we had gone to the central angle, it would just be 40, they would match. But instead, we're going to have to say, well, we pulled it out of the way again. We took this and moved it over here. So in order to figure out what its original value would have been if we'd locked it in over here, we need to average these two. Because for every little degree obtuse this one becomes, this one becomes acute, the same amount. So I'm going to do 110 plus 40 and get 150, and then I'm going to divide that by 2 and get 75. So there you go. If you have two chords that intersect, intercept each other, uh, they intercept the arcs, they intersect with each other. So if you have them intersecting and they're not in the center, remember that when you pull it out, uh, that's when you pull out that central point into somewhere else to create that intersection, you're changing one to be one of the angles to be more obtuse and one to be more acute in the same amount so you can just average those two together to find the value of the new angle that's formed and because these are vertical angles this one's also 75 incidentally enough and then these will be based off of minus 180 because they're supplemental just FYI